Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. Imagine a seasoned tennis player, poised at the baseline, ready to return serve. In a moment, they can analyze their opponent's stance, anticipate the ball's trajectory, and execute a precise return. This analytical ability doesn't come from instinct. It's the result of years of practice, analysis, and refinement. Critical thinking isn't so different. It's about honing your mental skills to navigate life's complexities with insight and agility. In this summary, you'll discover how to sharpen your cognitive reflexes so that you can make better decisions and cultivate intellectual virtues that will serve you for life. You'll also learn how to break free from societal thought patterns that limit your horizons. These skills aren't just academic exercises, they're practical tools for tackling real-world challenges. This means that whoever you are, and whatever challenges you face, these tools can support you. Let's begin. Chapter 1. Thinking Straight Takes Practice Thinking straight takes practice. We've all made decisions we later regret. That's part of being human. But what if there was a way to dramatically reduce those moments? What if you could develop a skill set that would change the way you approach every choice, big or small? Building critical thinking skills requires effort and deliberate practice. It means becoming increasingly aware of your thought processes and consciously working to improve them. By recognizing the structure, implications, and basis of your thoughts, you can identify both strengths and weaknesses in your mental patterns. At its most simple, critical thinking is the art of employing our best cognitive abilities in any given situation. It's a skill that impacts every facet of our lives, from personal relationships to professional endeavors. Yet most of us have never seriously examined our thought processes. We take our mental habits for granted, unaware of their quality or how they operate. Consider how we learn language. We instinctively grasp the rules of grammar without explicitly knowing how to articulate them. If someone said, where the up cow is down, you'd immediately recognize it as nonsensical, even if you couldn't explain why. But while we're adept at recognizing grammatical errors, we're often oblivious to our misuse of concepts, the building blocks of our thoughts. When we fail to examine and precisely define the concepts we're using, we open ourselves up to faulty reasoning, miscommunication, and poor decision-making, especially when the concepts are complex or emotionally charged. Consider love. The word can mean many things. The ancient Greeks, for example, distinguish between eros, romantic, passionate love, philia, deep friendship, storge, familial love, and agape, selfless, universal love. Conflating different meanings can lead to confusion and disappointment. When someone says, I love you, do they mean, I feel physically attracted to you, or I feel romantically and passionately committed to you? There's a significant difference. In these and many other cases, conceptual clarity is essential. Ultimately, cultivating critical thinking is about more than just improving our cognitive skills. It's about developing a nuanced, fair and clear-eyed view of the world. As a result of this, we become more effective in our pursuits, more empathetic in our relationships and more fulfilled in our lives. In a world of increasing complexity and accelerating change, the ability to think critically isn't just an advantage, it's a necessity. Chapter 2. Cultivating Intellectual Virtues When was the last time you changed your mind about a deeply held belief? If you can't remember, it might be time to strengthen your critical thinking skills. It's important to regularly evaluate the integrity of your critical thinking. Weak critical thinking uses intellectual skills selectively, often to defend pre-existing views or win arguments at any cost. This is tempting, but inevitably leads us to errors and mistakes. Weak critical thinkers excel at picking apart others' arguments while remaining unaware of the flaws in their own reasoning. 
Strong critical thinking, by contrast, includes not just analytical skills, but also ethical considerations and intellectual virtues. It means applying the same rigorous standards to our own ideas as we do to others, and actively seeking out challenging perspectives. In short, it requires us to be fair-minded. Fair-mindedness is the ethical foundation of critical thinking. It demands that we treat all viewpoints with equal consideration, setting aside personal biases and interests. This is no small feat our minds naturally gravitate towards information that confirms our existing beliefs and protects our ego. So how can we overcome this? By deliberately cultivating a set of interconnected intellectual virtues. Let's look at these. Intellectual humility is first. We have to recognize the limits of our knowledge and remain open to the possibility that we might be wrong. This isn't about lacking confidence, but rather being realistic about the limits of anyone's knowledge. Closely related is intellectual courage, the willingness to confront ideas that challenge our deepest beliefs. This virtue pushes us to engage seriously with opposing viewpoints, even when it makes us uncomfortable. We resist the urge to dismiss contrarian ideas outright and instead give them fair consideration. Next is intellectual empathy. This allows us to truly understand others' perspectives by imaginatively putting ourselves in their shoes. It goes beyond mere personal sympathy to actively reconstructing the other person's reasoning processes. Intellectual integrity is about consistency, holding ourselves to the same high standards we expect of others and admitting when we've made mistakes or contradicted ourselves. Intellectual perseverance pushes us to tackle complex problems even when solutions aren't immediately apparent. It's the drive to work through confusion, questions, and setbacks, recognizing that meaningful insights require sustained effort. Confidence in reason reflects a belief that, over time, sound thinking and evidence-based approaches lead to better outcomes. It doesn't mean throwing out our emotions, but rather trusting in our capacity to use reason as a tool for understanding the world and solving problems. Finally, intellectual autonomy empowers us to think independently, even as we respect intellectual standards. Autonomy means critically examining received wisdom and forming our own well-reasoned conclusions, even if they go against the views of authority or popular opinion. These virtues don't operate in isolation. Rather, they form an interconnected web, each reinforcing and enabling the others. Developing them is a lifelong journey, requiring consistent self-reflection. But by cultivating them, we stand a greater chance of making good decisions and contributing to our communities and societies. Stages of Growth Picture Two People Debating a Political Issue Chapter 3 Stages of Growth one relies on emotional appeals and vague generalizations, while the other cites specific evidence and considers multiple competing perspectives. What separates these two approaches, and how can we cultivate the latter? Proficiency in critical thinking happens in stages. We begin as unreflective thinkers, blissfully unaware of the flaws in our reasoning. In this stage, we accept our beliefs as truth without question, failing to recognize the assumptions and biases shaping us. As we encounter challenges to our beliefs, or face the consequences of bad decisions, we may progress to the stage of the challenged thinker. We become aware of limitations in our thinking. This newfound awareness can be unsettling, as we realize the extent to which unexamined thoughts have influenced us. With some courage and dedication, we evolve into beginning thinkers. At this stage, we actively seek to improve our cognitive skills, starting to recognize intellectual standards. What standards are these? Examples include clarity. Is my idea or statement easy to understand? Is it free from ambiguity or accuracy? Is my statement correct and free from errors? Or relevance, does my statement directly relate to the issue at hand? Or completeness, am I including all the necessary information? As beginning thinkers, we start recognizing these standards even as we struggle to apply them consistently. The practicing thinker represents a leap forward. 
Practice thinkers recognize that improving thinking takes regular, deliberate practice. They develop systematic approaches to analyzing and evaluating their thoughts, much like a musician who sets aside time each day to practice their scales. For example, they might commit to examining one assumption they hold each day, or to applying a specific intellectual standard to their decision-making processes at work. How can we foster this process of development? By working to internalize our intellectual standards. We might, for instance, focus on one standard, such as clarity, for a period of time. During this time, we reflect, am I expressing this idea as clearly as possible? How could I rephrase this to make it more understandable? Thus, we gradually incorporate intellectual standards into habitual patterns of thought. Another powerful tool for developing critical thinking skills is the intellectual journal. This involves regularly documenting and analyzing significant experiences or ideas. You might describe a challenging workplace interaction, examine your emotional responses, and analyze the underlying assumptions that influenced you. Revisiting journal entries over time will reveal patterns in your thinking, allowing you to make targeted improvements. Addressing egocentric thinking is crucial here. We all have a tendency to view the world through the lens of our own interests and experiences. A practicing thinker actively works to identify instances of this self-centeredness. They might catch themselves dismissing an idea simply because it conflicts with their pre-existing beliefs or interpreting someone's actions in the most personally favorable light. By acknowledging egocentric biases, thinkers can consciously adjust and expand their perspective, considering alternative viewpoints and striving to become more objective. Chapter 4. Breaking Free from Sociocentric Thinking From the moment we're born, we're immersed in social groups. Family, community, and culture shape our earliest experiences and mold our growing minds. This immersion isn't merely passive, it's an active process of conformity and acceptance. We learn to speak, think, and behave in ways that align with group norms. This unconscious absorption of group identity forms the foundation of sociocentric thinking. Sociocentric thinking is like egocentric thinking writ large. Just as individuals naturally see the world through their own perspective, groups develop collective worldviews. This acceptance is deeply emotional and often fiercely defended. Consider how vehemently political partisans argue for their side. They fundamentally differ in how they perceive and interpret reality. The power of sociocentric thinking lies in its invisibility to those caught in it. It feels natural, obvious, and right, making it particularly resistant to challenge. When confronted with opposing views, the sociocentric thinker doesn't just disagree. They can't even comprehend how someone could think differently. This can lead to dangerous outcomes, from discrimination and oppression to violence against outgroups. Language plays a crucial role. Groups choose names for themselves that imply superiority or uniqueness and they use language to justify actions that might otherwise be seen as unethical. For example, during the colonization of the Americas, Europeans referred to indigenous peoples as savages, assuming their conquest as a civilizing mission rather than an act of violence and theft. By controlling the narrative through careful use of language, groups can make even the most egregious acts seem noble or necessary. The media often serves as powerful amplifiers of sociocentric thinking. News outlets tend to present events in ways that flatter their nation or cultural group, while portraying rivals or enemies in a negative light. This needn't be deliberate. Often it's simply a reflection of the sociocentric biases shared by reporters, editors, and their audience. The result is a skewed view of the world that reinforces existing prejudices and makes it hard for people to understand or empathize with those outside their group. Overcoming sociocentric thinking is tough, but not impossible. Here are some tips. Actively seek out viewpoints that challenge your own beliefs. Practice perspective-taking by looking at issues from multiple angles. 
Analyze the language used in media and political discourse to identify bias and framing. Engage in cross-cultural experiences to broaden your worldview. Another tool is conceptual analysis, carefully examining how words and concepts are used in different contexts to uncover the assumptions and biases hidden within. For example, how terms like freedom, justice, or patriotism are used by different groups can reveal profound differences in worldview. Ultimately, the goal is to develop a conscience and ethical framework that transcends the limitations of any single cultural perspective. This doesn't mean we reject our own culture or background, but rather expand our moral circle to encompass all of humanity. By recognizing the common humanity in all people, regardless of group affiliations, we can work towards a more just and compassionate world. Final Summary the main takeaway of this summary to critical thinking by Richard Paul and Linda Elder is that critical thinking is an essential skill that anyone can acquire. Developing it requires deliberate practice and the conscious cultivation of intellectual virtues. It means examining our thought processes, challenging our biases, and striving for fairness and clarity in our reasoning. Some tips include keeping an intellectual journal and addressing egocentric and sociocentric thinking. Remember, strong critical thinking isn't just about analytical skills. It's about developing a more nuanced, fair, and clear-eyed view of the world. Cultivating your intellectual virtues will help you make better decisions with better outcomes. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.